Greetings from the Charter School Office. I'm Albert Bertram, the Finance Specialist for the Office. So this sheet is the review of the audited financial statements. So it takes the the audited financial statements and then puts it into a four-page sheet that summarizes the data and then does a couple calculations. So though NHA has a sweep agreement, uh, this is still available to the public. So it's important to know it's important for the board to know what's on there and uh, also provides a form of communication between us and the board. Um, so and lets everyone be on the same page. So we'll move into the uh, the sheet here. We'll start in the statement and net position area. Um, these are all directly from the audit. So to sh to show you that, we'll look at total assets for as an example. Uh, total assets is one million fifteen thousand seven hundred and seventy seven. So we'll go to the audit. Here's our assets. Here's our current assets. Down here is our total assets. 1,015,777. So you could match up those numbers if you wanted to. We'll go back to the sheet. <clears throat> Excuse me. Down here we have uh, ending net position. That would be the June 30th, 2014 ending net position. So that's that's the current one um, for this audit review. And then previous is the June 30th, 2013 ending net position. So it's just a means of comparing the two. Um, as we scroll down, we'll see balance sheet. This is a uh, general fund current assets. I'll show you that in a moment on the audit. And then over here we have the balance sheets general fund classification. So uh, we'll now go to the audit. The balance sheet is uh, two pages after the statement and net position. So we'll go one, two. There's a balance sheet right there. Um, again, even though there's a school service fund and uh, sometimes there's other funds and other for other schools, um, we're sticking to the general fund for this for this area of the of the sheet. So here's our assets right here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then as we scroll down, we'll see our here's our fund balance classification. So we have committed and then unassigned. So we'll go back to the sheet. And then uh, here's our cash and our, our assets over here. And then over here we have our unassigned and our committed amounts. So just so you know, unassigned are amounts that are available for any purpose. These amounts are reported only in the general fund. And then committed our amounts constrained to specific purposes by the board. To be reported as committed amounts cannot be used for any other purpose unless the board takes actions to remove or change the constraint. So these definitions are in the audit if you ever want to know what any of them are. So they're just, uh, I thought I'd provide those information for the two that the school utilized. Um, as we move up, we'll see the general fund. This is the activity for the year. So we have our beginning general fund balance, our revenues, expenditures, other financing sources, net change, and then the ending general fund balance. So even though the, the sweep agreement's in place, um, I'll still go through these calculations just so you know what they mean. General fund divided by revenues is the ending general fund divided by total revenues. Uh, general fund minus restricted, so if there was a restricted amount down here, it would subtract that restricted amount and then um, do the same calculation. There is no restricted, hence it's the same. General fund divided by expenditures, same thing. Ending general fund divided by fund balance divided by the total expenditures. And then uh, this one is the ending general fund divided by beginning general fund. So it just takes this divided by this. If it's above 100%, there was a positive change in the general fund. And if there was, if, if it's below 100%, there was a negative net change. So there was a positive net change. That's why this is above 100%. So, <clears throat> excuse me. As we move down, this area summarizes the the note section of the audit. So this takes the note section and then puts it into tables, numeric tables. Um, so this would be normally this is these are blank because they were part of the template. This would normally be associated with a state aid note. Um, this would be normally associated with a long-term debt like a revenue bond or a bond for a building of some sort. Um, that's not the NHA model, so that's why these are blank. So, excuse me, as we get come down here, this is the, the lease for the building. So that's what this amount is. Um, just shows what was paid during the year. Uh, this is NA. It's uh, not that there's no management fees. It's just that the sweep agreement allows the uh, NHA to take um, all revenues as their fee essentially. But um, that's, not all, that's not always the case. That's kind of overblown. So we'll, sh we'll show that on page two, though. We'll go through that. But... Um, it's not explicitly listed on the audit. That's why it's listed like this. And then these are error values because uh, because there's not a numeric value up here. So um, 
so down here, here's our, here's what we have as our the square footage for the school. If that's inaccurate, let us know. We'll get that fixed, and then it will just uh, automatically change all these numbers slightly based on what it is. Utilizing that square footage, we uh, do a couple calculations. We have total revenues per square foot, expen total expenditures per square foot, the difference, and then this payment per square foot is actually a little bit different. It takes the, the total lease payment and then divides it by the square footage, so it's just another way to measure it. Now, nothing's absolute, um, of course, but it's just a, a way to measure something instead of not having a way to measure something. So, um, Below that, we have operations and maintenance divided by square footage. Uh, so this essentially takes the line item of operations and maintenance down here and then divides it by the total square footage. Again, just a, a comparison. Um, so you can see trends from year to year. Um, and then square footage divided by fall 2013 takes the total square footage and divides it by the fall 2013 count, which is on page three. That is the corresponding fall count to this fiscal year. So that's that. As we move into page two, this is the general fund comparison. This uh, takes the the actual for June 30th as of June 30th, 2014, and then compares it to June 30th, 2013. So here's the difference. So you could look at. Uh, there was a positive, there was a, a big increase in state aid. Um, there was a couple, and then there was a large decrease in private sources, NHA. So uh, so in 2013, there was over a million dollars um, in revenues from private sources, NHA. June 30, 2014, there was uh, over 200,000, but a lot less than the year before. So uh, just to let you know what that is, I've made a note on page four. We'll go down there real quick. Um, so revenues private sources are represents a contribution granted by NHA for excess of academy expenditures over public revenues available. So um, that's NHA putting some revenues into the school. So um, that's something to take in consideration. This is a new school, and that's usually uh, I think several new NHA schools have had to do that, invest up front, and then uh, start to return on that investment over time as they try to get their management fees. So. Um, that's worth noting. Now, if you look all these, uh, so these are the revenues. If you look at all these, they all have these these accounting codes in front of them. If you are curious what those are, you don't know what what basic programs or added needs or anything is. It's pretty uh, quick to get an answer. Um, you, I put the accounting manual into Microsoft Word. You come up and push Find, type in what you're looking for, and then uh, make sure you're on results. Then you can actually skim through this document, and it'll show you where it's all at. So if you want to know what basic programs are, the code number, the county code number is right here. And then uh, basic programs are instructional activities including enrichment designed primarily to prepare pupils for activities as citizens, family members and workers as contrasted with programs designed to improve or overcome physical, mental, social, and or emotional handicap. And it includes pre-kindergarten. So just a nice tool. Uh, if you can get something into Word, you can skim through it pretty fast to find things and save you time. Technology can do wonderful things. Um, so these over here again let you compare things, so you can compare from year to year. And uh, this ending fund balance should match up with the the box in the upper right hand corner of page one. So this is June 30th, 2013 again. So as we move down, this is the budgetary comparison. Uh, original budget, final budget, actual. This is from the audit directly. Uh, this is uh, just a note that the original budget is due by July 1 which is well before the fall count for that year so the budget is usually amended so the final budget should be um, for many for many of the other schools that don't utilize the NHA agreement um, management agreement there's usually a discrepancy between these two because for that reason um, so that's just something to consider budget difference takes the difference between the actual and the final budget and then the percent change just does the percent change between the two so down here we have instruction percent of revenues that takes the uh, the total instruction and divides by total revenue so I'll go up and show you what that is so uh, right here it would be the total line item of instruction and divided by um, total revenues and if we go back down we'll see that in 2013 it was 40 and it went up to, to um, 43.17 so if we go back up here we'll see that the total revenues um, the school brought in dropped by 27,000 from 13 to 14 
but the total expenditures in instruction actually increased by 157,000. So that's the way that's the way that these indicators can show you what the change what change is going on. So it's not absolute because of a teacher that's being paid a high salary retires and then a new teacher is brought in for a lower salary that will drop that percentage. But it's a, a good way to see a trend and be able to ask a question. You know what's what's going on. So um, moving over here. These are uh, just another calculation, revenues as divided by fall 20, that fall 2013 count, and then expenditures divided by that fall 2013 count and the difference. So this is just another measurement to compare from year to year and then uh, see, what, see what happens with it. Um, down here we have our enrollment data. Uh, this is a new school, so there's some zeros. These zeros uh, cause this error. This is an error that says you can't divide by zero. So that's what this means, divide by zero. You can't divide by zero. So. Um, so here's the count data. This these numbers are derived from CEPI, which I'll show you what CEPI is because I don't like using an app acronym and not explaining what it is. CEPI is the Center for Educational Performance and Information. This is a, a good resource for some school information, school data. Hopefully you've heard about it. Um, you go to My School Data and then you filter through what you're looking for and you can see the student count or the free and reduced free and reduced lunch counts. And then here's all the spreadsheets. So I've gone through and dug all the data out of this spreadsheet for you, and here it is. Um, the last number is the unaudited number I received through Epicenter, which is our, our document retrieving program we use with the school. And uh, that number is unaudited, and it was on the DS4061 sheet. So that one is subject to change once I update this with the audited numbers if there was a change in that. So um, these ones should be the same, though. So over here... These are a numeric comparison from count to count. Um, for those who are numbers people, you'll see there's 18% or negative two. And there is a, for many of our schools, there is a drop from, from fall to spring. So down here, we'll see the visual the visual data for those who are visual people. There's zeros, obviously, for the new school. Um, so you'll see the trend. And then up, there's a slight drop here, which that happens in almost all our schools. I don't know where the kids go. but. Uh, and then up again, so that, that lets you see the trends really well. As we come down, we have our free and reduced lunch counts. So here's the two counts. Again, divide by zero, you can't divide by zero. And then uh, these are the corresponding percentages of free and reduced lunch. So this takes the total, this count and divides it by the corresponding total fall count. And that's where these this percentage is derived from. So as we scroll down to page four, this area will show the the information, again, this is directly from the audit. This is what was summarized on those four boxes on um, page one of this sheet. So here's the just the capital assets amount. Excuse me, that's reference page six. Operating lease, this talks about the operating lease information, and that's page 16 of the audit. As we move down, this is the reference to the management agreement in the audit, page 12, and it just states the um, what we call the sweep agreement where uh, NHA, um, how, how their fee is they calculated. And then here's that revenues, private services, NHA, which I've already talked about. Um, there is no findings, which is good. And then uh, here's a couple more notes. The charter expires June 30th, 2020, uh, according to page 12 of the audit. So um, something to just remember. Um, so that should be it. This document's reviewed and uh, I hope you got some benefit out of it. I know the sweep agreement's in place, but there, we still thought it was important to go over with all of our schools. We're doing this with all of our schools. So um, thanks for all you do for the children of Michigan. Um, and take care. If you need uh, to ask a question, my, my contact information is albertb at bmcc.edu. Have a good one and stay warm. Bye.